Let's see how to construct a public key crypto system based on integer factorization. We will begin with key generation. The first step of key generation involves choosing two large prime numbers. And we're going to call these prime numbers P and Q. Both P and Q are elements of the set of prime numbers. Now we're going to take the product of P and Q, and that's going to give us the semi prime number N. The prime factorization of N is P times Q. So once we choose these two large prime numbers and multiply them together, we have N, that is the semi prime number. Now we're going to compute Euler's totient function for n. Euler's totient function is denoted by phi. So we're going to compute phi of n. Because n is semi-prime, there's a neat expression for Euler's totient function. So we can evaluate this as p minus 1 times q minus 1. So we subtract 1 from both of these prime numbers. And then we take the product. And that gives us the Euler totient function of n. The next step is choosing an encryption exponent. And we're going to call the encryption exponent e. And e is an element of the integers mod phi. So that's this phi over here that we computed using p and q. So this notation over here is for the integers mod phi. And e is an element of this set. And we need to impose a special condition. We need to choose e such that the greatest common divisor of e and phi is equal to 1. Or in other words, e and phi are co-prime. The reason we're imposing this condition is, is because we need e to have a multiplicative inverse mod phi. And that multiplicative inverse is going to be used to define the decryption exponent. So here we have the encryption exponent, and here we have the decryption exponent. And D is the inverse of E mod phi. Now we have all of the information that is necessary to construct a pair of keys. One of those keys is going to be the secret key, and we're going to use it in decryption. And the other key is going to be a public key. And we're going to send that public key through a public channel to another participant. And that other participant is going to use that public key to encrypt a message and turn it into ciphertext. And then that other participant is going to send that ciphertext back over here. And we're going to use the secret key to decrypt the ciphertext and turn it back into the message. So let's have a look at this uh, key pair. So first, let's have a look at the secret key. So the secret key, SK, consists of N and D. So we're going to be decrypting with this secret key. The public key, PK, consists of N and E. And we're going to be encrypting using this public key. And let's send this public key through a public channel. Now, this is a public channel. That means adversaries that are performing cryptanalysis, they have access to this information that goes through the public channel. But they don't have access to this information over here. So only this participant that is doing the key generation protocol has access to this information. And they're just sending N and E through this public channel. Now, let's have a look at the other participant who is going to do encryption. So the other participant is going to encrypt a message. And the message is going to be an element of the integers mod n. So over here we had the integers mod phi, and we were finding the multiplicative inverse mod phi. And now we're going to be dealing with mod n. So this is the integers mod n. And we need to impose a special condition over here. So we need this message to be such that the greatest common divisor of m and n 
is equal to one. So that means these are co-prime. So it's very similar to this condition over here. So E and phi have to be co-prime and M and N, they also have to be co-prime. Now we can turn this message into ciphertext using this public key. So we can generate the ciphertext, which is C, from the message with modular exponentiation. So we take M and we, we raise it to the power of E, which is the encryption exponent. And we do this mod n. So that's the n over here. So n and e, that's what we're using to perform encryption. We got that from the public key. This is publicly available information. Now, what we need to do is send this ciphertext through the public channel. So we need to send this all the way through the public channel. And we can write this as ct, the ciphertext. And the ciphertext just con uh, consists of this value C over here. And now this original participant that generated the keys can decrypt this ciphertext that was sent through this public channel. And let's have a look at how that's going to be done. So we're going to do decryption over here. And decryption is going to take the ciphertext and it's going to give us the message. So we're going to extract the message from the ciphertext. And we can do that by raising C to the power of D mod N. So you can see that D and N, we have that from the secret key. And C, we got that through the public channel that was sent from this other participant. And that allows us to decrypt the message. A question you might have is, why does this work? Why does performing this modular exponentiation give us back the message? So over here, we performed a modular exponentiation to encrypt, and then we performed another modular exponentiation to decrypt. So let's see why this works. So let's have a look at C raised to the power of D. C raised to the power of D is the same as M raised to the power of E, all raised to the power of D. That's because C is defined as M raised to the power of E. And we can rewrite this as m to the power of the product of e and d. What is the product of e and d? By definition, the decryption exponent is the multiplicative inverse mod phi. So that means e times d is equal to 1 mod phi. These are multiplicative inverses of each other. And if we multiply them together, we get the multiplicative identity. And all of this is valid mod phi. So that means we can rewrite this expression as m raised to the power of 1 plus some integer t times phi. So we have an integer multiple of phi over here. So we can't just write 1 because what we're, what we're doing over here is we're working mod phi. That means 1 is the same as 1 plus an integer multiple of phi. And we can break this expression up into m times m raised to the power of phi all raised to the power of t. So we just manipulated this expression, and then we get this form over here. But what is m to the power of phi? m raised to the Euler totient function of n is equal to 1 mod n. This over here is known as Euler's theorem. So uh, this is valid as long as m and n are co-prime. That's why we had to have this condition over here. So this condition is essential because it allows us to make this equivalence hold. So we're raising the message to the power of the totient function of n. And that's giving us 1 mod n. So that means this thing in the brackets over here, m to the phi, that's just equal to 1. And then we have 1 to the power of an integer, that's equal to 1. So this is just the same as multiplying by the identity. And that just leaves the message by itself. So here we have the message. And all of this over here, this line, is being done mod n. So this is mod n. This, this line over here, this is mod phi. So this, this section over here is mod phi. But this line over here, this is all mod n. And so is Euler's theorem. So we've used Euler's theorem. 
and the definition of the encryption and decryption exponents. And that's given us this relationship. So this is why this system works. And this public key crypto system is known as the RSA crypto system. So this is a very widely used crypto system, but it is under threat. And the threat comes from quantum algorithms and specifically Shor's factoring algorithm. Why is that the case? Well, let's have a look at what is publicly available. What are we sending through the public channel between these two participants? We're sending the public key and the ciphertext. That means someone can store this information and try and use it to perform this decryption. So what do we need to perform decryption? We need this exponent D. So N is publicly available and the ciphertext is also publicly available. So the, the semi-prime and the ciphertext are already publicly available and adversaries could store that information. But D is not publicly available. To get D, we need to first have E, but E is publicly available. And what else do we need to know? We need to know phi. So if we can compute phi, then we can work out D because we already have E, we just need phi. So this process is known as cryptanalysis. We're trying to break this system and figure out what that secret message was. So what is stopping us from getting this value of D? Well, it's actually very difficult to compute phi if we don't know what P and Q are. So computing phi of N can be done very quickly with this expression. But this expression relies on the fact that we know what the primes are. So the participant that has generated the secret key and the public key, they know what these prime numbers are because they chose those prime numbers. But adversaries don't have access to that information. But that, that information is actually hidden inside of this semi-prime number over here. So the security of this public key crypto system depends on the difficulty of integer factorization. If we can factor this value of n into its prime factors, then we can compute phi, and that gives us enough information to compute d, and then we can do decryption. So that is how we compromise this crypto system. And in other videos, we're also going to be talking about other public key crypto systems. Some of them are also vulnerable to attacks from quantum computers, but others might not be.